thank our sponsor, Dostal Beer House. Dostal Beer House is South Huntsville's premier bottle shop and tap room featuring 32 taps of local American and international craft beer, as well as bottled beads, ciders, and even gluten-free beers. Yeah, and kombucha, which I'm pretty psyched about. There you go. And it's <laughs> South Huntsville's place for anybody to get craft beer and they make great gifts. They do. They have the 24 Days of Cheer. Oh, right, exactly. Craft Beer Advent Calendar. Get yours before they are gone. Exactly. So check out Dostal Beer House at South Parkway or dsb-hsv.com. All right, ready? Mm-hmm. All right. Welcome to another episode of No Huntsville. Hello, Daniela. Hey, Tom. Who's our guest? We are joined by <laughs> Timbrook Toys. Timbrook Toys. So Dustin Timbrook, Molly Timbrook. Welcome, welcome. to the show. Thank, Thank you. Thank you all for being here and for bringing their beautiful game. I don't know if people who are watching have heard about Timbrook Toys or Hedgelord. Hedgelord. But currently this game has been taking pretty much the breweries by storm. I think it's almost every brewery <laughs> in town. And we got a big event coming up that we want to talk about, but I think we yeah. first should step back and kind of talk about the creation of this game. Yeah, how right? has this come to be? Yes. Molly? <laughs> <laughs> well, we were, um, we were going on vacation in Nashville, North Carolina, um, I guess last fall. And um, on the way up, Dustin was talking about doing a game or some kind of invention that involved gears. Um, it's very gear-based kept having thoughts about gears um, <laughs> almost obsessively <laughs> um and then you know we were in Asheville so we went to the Biltmore and we're both into like British programs and Dustin's especially into hedge mazes and I was outraged that there was not a, sorry if I'm talking too loud no a hedge, hedge maze at the Biltmore because why are you gonna have the biggest private estate in America and a big a beautiful garden and not a hedge maze. It's yeah. like a huge yeah. oversight. Well, hey, Bill What kind of rich person are <laughs> yeah. you? Yeah. Bill Moore, if you're watching. Yeah. Oh, Bill, the Bill Moore, they watch the show. I don't know if you know they're not. They are longtime viewers. Yeah, okay. So Hash, I'm sure they're going to get right on it. boycott Bill Moore. There you go. Until they get a hedge. <laughs> All right. So you're talking about gears and hedges. And your disappointment turns into a new creation, yeah. right? Isn't that all yeah. great inventions come out of, what is it, necessity <laughs> or disappointment. need? Disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> a necessity to get away from your disappointment so well, all right he'd been talking about you know kind of a gear-based game and that became you know what if that was a hedge maze yeah okay. and, and and well i i knew that uh i wanted a maze that could change mm -hmm. and uh, originally i wanted gears to be a part of how that would happen but when i got home and started working on it and figuring yeah. out how to make it the gears got real complicated. Yeah, it's less for, practical, yeah. For something to, to, to be able to make it make it home, because this takes long enough to, to make as it is. But, yeah, so for people that don't know, you are hand-making these things. Yeah. So it's not like it's, you know, you're somehow manufacturing on some mass level. Right. The, these things are, you said they're screen printed. Mm -hmm. A lot part, parts are, but the rest of it, you're kind of putting together on your own, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean the, the whole the whole thing. Right. Yeah. It's all made out of our house or in yeah. a secret cranny of Low Mill. Yeah, I've got a, a little <laughs> little wood shop uh, in a hidden part of Low Mill to do. Oh, to do well, we got, that's a whole other episode. We'll talk about that, <laughs> that hidden part at Low Mill. But the, all right, the room of requirement. <laughs> awesome. And so yeah, so you it's all handmade. All hand cut, like every little Jeez. piece. There's so much. It feels like well, probably well, blood, sweat, yeah. and tears. We're using, we're using power tools. Uh, oh, of course. Yeah. You're not like sawing it. <laughs> no, it's, not, it's, like, it's not like Santa's workshop or anything. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there, there's there's blood involved. <laughs> Lots of blood. And so you guys did a. I, I could be cloned later. Uh, <laughs> you guys did a pre-orders. Um, how long ago did you first open up that first round of pre-orders? That was in March. Okay. And Dustin, and it had, took off. Dustin had just made. Um, once we got back from Asheville that fall, he, um, I, I was like, "Well, we haven't talked about this gear-based game lately." And then I came home, and he had made a paper version um, with tax and things. And he was like, "This is the game." And, and then, you're like, "Oh my god, this is serious! You're well, serious about this." But also, <laughs> I looked like a, a shout out to my wife because, uh, like. It was like three in the morning. I'm sitting on the living room floor in my underwear at the coffee table, like with a bunch of graph paper, like, <laughs> I've done it. 
<laughs> and she wasn't like, oh, you're crazy. She, she stuck like, around okay. after that. <laughs> well, we play tested it with our friends. Yeah. Just like, like the paper version. We're like, okay, the rules work. The story works. This works. And then he made the first like real this, basically. Mm-hmm. Right. And then he put it on Facebook just for friends and family. Like, hey, yeah. I think we're going to do this. You can order a copy. Um, and, and then it really took off in a way we did not expect. <laughs> yeah, uh, we were we were real excited at first because the orders kept coming in, and then we quickly got overwhelmed because we didn't charge that much for it. <laughs> Originally, it was forty bucks, um, and wow. uh, these things take a long time to make. <laughs> right. How long so. does one make take to make? So people can really understand. Uh, right now, I think it's between an hour and a half and two hours. I'd like to get it down to an hour. But they're made in batches. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to tell because you, you will screen one color for right. 24 yeah. hours yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and go from there. So haven't exactly calculated it. Yeah. But, but it's a long time, I think. Is, yeah. It's time intensive, yeah. So I think this is a good time for us to go over exactly how you play this game. So um, why don't we start? So we'll go ahead and... Um, have you guys start explaining how the game works, how the pieces work, and what the goal of the game is, is, is actually to do there. Okay. Yeah. So why don't you start with the, the back story? Okay. So the premise of this game, should I read from this, actually? Yeah. Yeah. So on top of the just playing, like the instructions are in here, you're not going to lose them. Um, so the premise is... Um, the gentle person's wager proclaims that who shall ever escape the maze or be left the sole survivor of the beast shall be named the most honorable hedge lord, inheriting the splendid estates of all participants. So the premise is that you are this dastardly lord, and you have made an agreement with your colleagues, other kind of terrible people, that <laughs> you're going to go into this maze, and whoever is going to get out alive first, or whoever is the last standing once your corresponding beast murders or devours the rest of the participants. Um, that person's the hedge lord. They inherit all the wealth. You got a lord and you got a beast that goes with that lord. Your lord's goal is to get out of the maze. You're trying to get out of the diagonal opposite corner of where you started because that's the farthest point from where you're starting. So, Tom, uh, you would be trying to get out of Molly's side over here. Gotcha. Um, and vice versa. Your beast... You control that, and its point is to attack other lords. And if a beast ever comes upon another lord, it takes them and their beast out of the game. So if mine was to contact Molly, she would be out of the game. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, And like Molly said, it's either you get off the board or you're just the last person who's still alive. Yeah. Um, And then... uh, there's a way that you move through the maze. You want to explain that? Yeah. So we've got, let's, would you put this back over here? Yeah. Thanks. So we've got this key, has, um, I'm sorry, we've got this um, coin with a key and then the skeleton hands. Um, you flip it when it's your turn. Um, if you land on the key, you get to move the hedge maze one quarter turn. Doesn't have it doesn't have to be a piece that's close to you. It could be any piece on the board. Any piece. Somebody could be standing on it. Yeah, you could use it to ruin someone else's day. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or make your day better. Yeah. <laughs> can I show that key? Yeah. So, and if you get the skeleton hand, you can't turn the hedge piece at all. Yeah. And at the same time, when you do the coin, you also roll the dice, and the dice determines how many spaces you can move. So. I rolled a two, which is pretty terrible, but (laughs) I can still demonstrate a move with it. So uh, that's how many spaces either one of your pieces can move or both. So I could go one, two, I could go one, two, or I could go one, two. Gotcha. All right. And the other thing is when you are rotating pieces, you can do that at any point in the move. So let's say that I roll a five, and where did our coin go? Right here. Okay. And we land on the key. Well, I could go and turn a piece first, or I could go and turn it after, or I could go one, two, three, turn, four, five. Mm -hmm. And that turn does not count against your move total. So it's kind of a way to get like an extra move. Sneaky. So there's a lot of strategy that you can use in this game. That's right. That's awesome. 
tell them the last rule of the game. Well, there's one last rule. So if you are the last person standing or if you're the first person to get off the board, um, there is rule seven, the very last rule. Um, I think it's seven. Yeah. Yes, it is seven. <laughs> um, that is... If you are, you know, potentially the winner, you haven't really won until you've taken the flag out and you've screamed, I am the hedge lord, as loud as you possibly can. Yeah. I feel like you could yell it louder. (laughs) 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 Yeah, we'll be, we'll be. But if you go to different breweries in Huntsville that have this game, Mm -hmm. people will be playing them and you will know that they're playing them because you will hear people screaming, (laughs) I am the hedge lord. Well, and you know, so this game before people place that order, if they want to give it a try, they can try it at several different bre- bre- breweries in town. Where where can they do that? Um, at Interspace Brewing, at um, Old Town Beer Exchange, and Green Bus Brewery, okay. and then it's also in Birmingham at Seasick Records. That's awesome. Yeah. That. Way to go, guys. And so you guys have an event coming up, because you said you had this, this huge amount of pre-orders first time. You had to cut it off because of how time-intensive this is, but... You're opening ex- an exclusive yeah. sort of another round of pre-orders where people can go ahead and get on the list for this. How do they do that? So um, this coming Friday at um, Straight to Ale, um, they're launching their latest um, STA local beer, which is when a bunch of um, they ask a bunch of companies from the area to come together and collaborate on a beer. <laughs> um, this time around, I think this is the second time they've done it, it's going to be a um, German alt beer with cocoa nibs and coffee from Honest Coffee Roasters. Oh, and um, it's going to be called Cool Beans. So they're having <laughs> um, kind of an event for it. At Straight to Ale in the gym. Um, it's from 6 to 8, I believe. And um, the other folks involved are going to be coming and bringing their things to um Yeah, to we're, show. we're somehow included, even yeah, though all, all the, other, yeah, the other businesses are legit. And established. <laughs> this <laughs> is legit. <laughs> we're getting there. But, um, but we'll be there. Um, you can pre-order um, Hedge Lord there. Mm-hmm. Um Saturday, we're going to open it up to the general public, but if you want to get ahead of the rush, you can do that Friday at the event. Yeah, the, the earlier you... Because they're made sign, to order. They're made to order, so uh, there's... Yeah. I mean, the difference between Friday and Saturday could be weeks or months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of how long you're waiting to get We had kind of a game. secret pre-order <laughs> open for our email subscribers, and we've mm. already sold a lot more than I personally thought. And if people want to subscribe to that email newsletter, and there's lots of good and interesting stuff in there, they can go to our website, timbrook.toys. Um, and after Saturday, uh, that's... It will kind you of just, okay. uh, Anybody can order the game yeah. okay. uh, from, from that site. And so how long? Because you did say it does take a difference depending on you know when they order, but about... <clears throat> so expectations are managed... No one's getting a toy by Christmas. No. But <laughs> how, when can people expect to get their copy? In the year Ish. of 2019. All right. <laughs> that. All right. Yeah. 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 Um, I would probably say the people that have been in pre-orders are probably going to get theirs maybe in. I don't want to guarantee anything. Okay. Yeah. That's but totally fine. Just people need to know that it's, it's going to take some patience because this is a handcrafted yeah. and, toy. That's and, awesome. And we want it to happen faster. There's just the... There are a lot of variables at play, and the main one is, you know, we both have full-time jobs right now. But down the road, who knows when, right. uh, we would like to this to be a real company with multiple products and a full-time job for mm-hmm. both of us and hopefully employ other people. And that's going to take a lot of time, but... Um, we're working towards it. Yeah, we're, we're working towards it, so... But I don't know... Oh, sorry. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't know what you guys... In- if you've had time to think <laughs> about it because of this game and you guys just got married, but what do you envision for what's, what do you have ideas for your next toys? What's mm-hmm. you're working on things. Give Doodle, us a glimpse. Give us a, give around. us a tiny <laughs> taste <laughs> secrets here of what the next uh, thing might be. Well, <laughs> I think the, the immediate next thing that I've already started working on is, uh, an expansion for this game since, this is something that so many people are already <laughs> already have, right. and uh, and the expansion. I won't give anything away, but it it refers back to the kind of uh, original idea of how the game was going to work. Will there be There's gears? gears. Don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> I see gears. Nice. That is awesome. <laughs> um, and then yeah, we've talked about a lot of other yeah, games, not necessarily ideas. even just games, but. 
toys in general. So and and a and a kind of cohesive story univor- universe universe because <laughs> all these characters have really great backstories. Oh, they got some backstories. Mo- Molly wrote. And, okay. Um, and we kind of want to build that out into any kind of toy or product that we make. Well, and eventually right. we're going to release like this story. Yeah. And then what's in here. Yeah. We, we wanted it to be in the packaging, but it was just screen printing. You can only print so small, right. so we couldn't fit the words. And then the graphic novel comes out, then the yeah. movie rights, yeah. and it's the whole thing. There'll be action figures. It'll there, be done. There will be comics yes. sooner than later. Um, so That is awesome. And it's really incredible how much imagination and skill has gone into this game. And it's exciting to see how people have really grabbed onto it immediately. Um, I think this is a lot about our community and the people here and sure. what they value yeah. and also y'all's talent and, and imagination. No, it's just one more reason or one more kind of um, uh, thought behind that fact that we have a, just a ton of creative people here in town and they're doing stuff and they're putting it out there and it's pretty amazing so and it's getting supported like that's yeah that's, that's, that's another that's thing too it's one thing to make yeah, this it's, it's one thing to make this and just be your kind of pet project but it's right. another thing where people are coming out and wanting to help around to the point where you got to put the brakes on yeah. which is pretty amazing <laughs> yeah. so that's got to feel really good i think it, it and that's pretty amazing feel, feel really good and you have dreams of having a toy a company <laughs> at a huntsville and it could possibly happen right. so yeah. it's pretty cool i mean i'd like to see us have a studio in low mill where we're selling toys like i feel like maybe people need that yeah definitely pretty cool Incredible. well awesome guys so you mentioned the website where can people follow you stay yeah. in the loop so they can get this and see whatever is coming in the future so our website is timbrook.toys um and then we're on facebook and instagram as timbrook toys fantastic pretty pretty easy awesome well Just thank go you there. so much for showing us how Thanks to play come the, on game the show coming on the show thank you and no Huntsville would like to thank OTVX, The Fret Shop, and Downtown Self Storage for making No Huntsville possible. Thanks.